Kamala Harris may have her eyes on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue as her future address, but in the meantime, she's lived in a handful of stunning homes. This includes several California properties like her current mansion in Brentwood, a condo in Washington, D.C., and even the official vice president's residence. Just last month, President Biden suspended his bid for a second term and endorsed Vice President Kamala for the presidency instead. If Kamala ends up taking home the title, she'll move her stuff from number one observatory circle, the VP residence, to the White House. Kamala Harris's early life and career started in California, where she served as the district attorney of San Francisco and later as the attorney general of California. During these years, she lived in a few different charming homes across the state, from LA to San Francisco. In fact, her one-time loft in San Francisco, which spans just over a thousand square feet of space, is now an Airbnb property where you can stay at. Kamala's sunny San Francisco loft was located on the top floor of Boutique Building in the South of Market neighborhood, and she bought it back in 2004, the same year she became the first ever female district attorney in San Fran. When Kamala was elected to the United States Senate in 2016, she moved to Washington, D.C. to represent California on the national stage. In the nation's capital, she purchased a condo offering her a convenient and comfortable home base close to work. Upon her election as vice president in 2020, Kamala moved to number one observatory circle, the official residence of the vice president. Located on the grounds of the United States Naval Observatory, this grand home has been the residence for vice president since 1974. Number One Observatory Circle is a Queen Anne style house known for its elegant architecture and lush surroundings. The home gives a spacious and secure environment for Harris and her husband Doug Emhoff to host official events and entertain guests while keeping their personal privacy. With President Biden's recent endorsement of Harris for the presidency, I mean, she might soon be setting her sights on the most famous address in America, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. If elected, Harris would move from the vice presidential residence to the White House, a transition that would mark a historic milestone in her career. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Kamala may work in Washington, D.C., but she still owns a stunning home in the upscale Brentwood area of Los Angeles, California. Kamala's husband, Doug, purchased this property in 2012 for $2.7 million, but it's said to have gone up in value to at least $5 million since then. She and her husband, Doug, who's an entertainment attorney, actually bought the 3,500 square foot house two years before they got married. Doug financed the home with a Wells Fargo loan and later transferred it to a joint trust after their marriage. Brentwood's a trendy neighborhood known for its celeb residents like Gwyneth Paltrow and LeBron James. And Kamala's mansion here features four bedrooms, five bathrooms, and a private pool. However, details about the style of her house remain scarce as images have been blurred out on Google Street View. In 2017, when Kamala became a U.S. Senator, she purchased a stylish condo in Washington, D.C. for $1.7 million. Located in an upscale building, the Westlight in the West End neighborhood, her condo spans 1,700 square feet of space. Her unit here offered two beds and two baths, and it gave Kamala a place to balance her demanding Senate responsibilities with a private retreat. Features of the Westlake building include 24-7 concierge services, a pet washing station, and a high-class fitness center with all the modern equipment, even Peloton bikes. Not to mention, it boasts DC's only 25-meter heated rooftop pool, giving residents a perfect backdrop to check in or out with the rest of the world. In 2021, Kamala sold this condo at $1.85 million, making a profit on the sale. Of course, being vice president, Kamala and her husband also have enjoyed living in one of the official residences. Located on the grounds of the United States Naval Observatory, this grand home has been the residence for vice presidents since 1974. Number One Observatory Circle is a Queen Anne style house known for its elegant architecture and lush surroundings. The home gives a spacious and secure spot for Kamala to host official events and entertain guests while keeping her personal privacy. Located two and a half miles from the White House, this 9,000 square foot, three-story Victorian home is situated on a hill. 
The vice president's residence occupies just 12 of the 72 acres. The grounds also feature landing areas for the president and vice president's helicopters, Marine One and Marine Two. The compound even houses the U.S. Naval Observatory Master Clock, known for maintaining time with a precision of within 10 nanoseconds. Historically, vice presidents lived in their own homes, but as it became increasingly difficult and expensive to secure private residences, the need for an official VP home arose. In 1974, Congress authorized the refurbishment and transformation of this property into the official home. In the Queen Anne style which the home is built, there are round turret rooms and extensive wraparound porches. The expansive grounds give plenty of space for entertaining. And during his eight years as vice president, George H.W. Bush hosted 900 parties at this very home. The sun-filled solarium was Joe and Jill Biden's favorite room in the house for the eight years that they spent living there. Now, each former vice president has added their personal touches to the property, and Kamala has likely done the same. George H.W. Bush installed a horseshoe pit and a jogging track. Dan Quayle added a swimming pool and Dick Cheney, well, he was widely believed to have built an underground bunker after 9-11. Kamala and Doug infused elements of California into the home when redecorating. Their designer Sheila Bridges used a neutral color palette with bold accents through the home, like a pink library. While the exact number of rooms in this stunning mansion is unknown, it's estimated that there are at least 30, each with its own unique character. Kamala is known for her love of cooking and often spends time in the kitchen preparing meals for family and friends. Her home spaces reflect her personal style and interests, with elements that highlight her heritage and love for art and literature. Harris's homes are often full of art and photos that celebrate her Indian and Jamaican roots, showing her pride in her diverse background. While renovations were underway at the U.S. Naval Observatory residence, Harris and Emhoff resided in Blair House, located just across the street from the White House. Blair House, the president's official guest house, features 14 bedrooms, 35 bathrooms, three formal dining rooms, a gym, and a beauty salon. After looking at where Kamala Harris has lived over the years, that's going to wrap up today's house tour. From her early days in California to her current role as vice president, each home has played a part in her story. As she continues to work on her political career, her homes have given her not just a place to live, but a sanctuary where she can recharge and prepare for the challenges ahead. Thanks for watching. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you in another video. Bye. Tim Walls, the vice president candidate and governor of Minnesota, might soon have new neighbors in Minnesota. A house listing appeared on Zillow at the edge of his property in Mankato. The home, priced at 379k, is located on Oak Knoll Boulevard, sitting on a 10,000 square foot lot. Built in 1931, this property features original oak wood floors, an exposed patio, a fireplace, elegant interior arches, and an updated kitchen. This home in Monaco is where Tim lived prior to moving into the official residence for the Minnesota governor, or next door to here. <laughs> the residence serves as the official home for the first family and functions as a state ceremonial building. This was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. The governor's residence fulfills two key roles for the state, providing housing for the governor and the first family, and it hosts various state ceremonial events. Tim Walls is known as the current governor of Minnesota. Born in Nebraska, Tim has had a diverse career that spans military service, education, and politics. Before his political career, Walls was a high school teacher and a member of the National Guard, where he served as a command sergeant major. His military service included deployment to the Iraq War, which has greatly influenced his perspectives and his policies. Wall's political career began when he was elected as the U.S. Representative for Minnesota's 1st Congressional District in 2006. During his time in Congress, he was known for his work on veterans' issues, rural developments, and education. His time in Congress lasted until 2019, when he actually transitioned to the role of Governor of Minnesota. 
As governor, Walls has focused on a range of issues, including education, healthcare, and climate change. Tim and his wife Gwen have lived in Mankato and Minneapolis, and currently they reside in St. Paul, Minnesota's capital, where they're deeply involved in local community activities. As of August 2024, Vice President Kamala Harris has chosen Tim Walls as her running mate to join the Democratic ticket. So more individuals seem to be wondering more about Tim these days. Let's first look at where Tim was living in the Maine governor's residence. In memory of their parents, the two youngest daughters of Horace Hills Irvin donated their family home to the state of Minnesota on August 31st, 1965. Since the state had never had an official governor's residence, the house was specifically given for this purpose and formerly designated the State Ceremonial Building. The house was intended to provide the governor with a little dignity pomp, if you will, which are vital to the proper functioning of government. Before this, formal events hosted by governors were held in the governor's reception room at the state capitol, in hotels, or in the governor's private homes. The residence now serves as the official home of the first family and a state ceremonial building, and it was added to the National Register of Historic Places in December 1974. The governor's residence plays two key roles for the state. It serves as the home for the governor and the first family, and it hosts state ceremonial functions. The place opened its doors to the public for the first time on July 4th, 1973, with about 11,000 visitors attending the open house. In 2023, Governor Tim moved into the University of Minnesota's East Cliff Mansion, located off East River Road, and has already enjoyed some stunning sunsets over the Minneapolis skyline. Even before moving in, Tim had admired all the windows in this house and the view overlooking the river. He had recalled an earlier visit during his congressional career when he was actually invited there by then university president Robert Bruninks, who lived in the mansion from 2002 to 2011. It's a beautiful home, Walls said. Tim, along with his wife Gwen, son Gus, and their pets, a dog and a cat, relocated to East Cliff on July 10th after the Board of Regents approved a lease in April, this was in 2023, allowing the first family to live there temporarily until September 2024. Renovations on the main governor's mansion, located in St. Paul, began in June 2023, and at the time were expected to take more than a year. Tim explained then, the foundation cracked and the whole house is sinking. Initially, the Walls family considered a lease in Dakota County, but when the timing aligned with the vacancy of East Cliff, they decided to move into the mansion. During their time living here, the Walls family has been encouraged to make the mansion feel like home, and reportedly Tim even brought furniture with him from the governor's main residence. Wall shared that his family was settling in last summer and beginning to personalize the space. He pointed out that living with his high school aged son, along with their dog and cat, Scout and Afton, brought a little different demographic to the mansion. The home is designed in the Georgian colonial style, and over the years, the house underwent various renovations, but there was still some wear and tear over the years. In 1988, extensive repairs were initiated, but unforeseen issues caused the costs to double. The main house covers 10,000 square feet with the entire property, including the carriage house and summer house, totaling 20,000 square feet. The property, which sits on 1.6 acres, is valued at an estimated $3.1 million. Despite the temporary relocation, Tim planned to continue hosting traditional gatherings like Halloween trick-or-treating and decorating the house for Christmas as they would at the governor's residence. Where do you think they'll be hosting these holidays this year? Before living in the official governor homes, of course, Tim also owned a home elsewhere in Minnesota and reportedly he still does. Recently, it was reported that the vice president candidate Tim might soon have new neighbors at his home back in Mankato, Minnesota, which is the home that he owns. 
He recently noticed a property listed on Zillow right at the edge of his own. The house, located on Oak Knoll Boulevard, is priced at $379,000 and sits on a lot just over 10,000 square feet. Built in 1931, this property offers original oak wood floors, an exposed patio, a fireplace, elegant interior arches, and an updated kitchen. Described in the listing as a captivating three-story colonial home, the house features original oak wood floors, a cozy wood-burning fireplace, charming archways, and numerous modern updates that add to the allure. This neighborhood also boasts a variety of amenities like the nearby Rasmussen Woods, the scenic Red Jacket Trail, and Dawson Park, which is just a short walk away. For today, that'll wrap up our look into the homes of Tim Walls. Thanks for watching. I'm Tara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram if you'd like to chat, and I'll see you all another time. Bye!